Captain Torek gazed out the viewport of the Volcar command ship, at the small alien vessel drifting before them. It was barely larger than an escape pod, with primitive ion engines and no visible weapon systems or defensive shields. Skin it again, what do we have? Torek asked his science officer. Basic life support systems, rudimentary communication protocols, Lieutenant Drac responded, by the ancestors, I don't think there's more than a handful of beings on that ship, and they're orbiting a Class M planet, that appears mostly undeveloped as well. Torek stroked his chin thoughtfully, the Volcar expeditions had conquered dozens of weaker species across three sectors of the galaxy, but first contacts were always a gamble, showed too much force too soon and it could provoke a drawn-out resistance but appearing weak could invite challenges to Volcar dominance. This situation seemed too good to pass up, a tiny population, isolated on a backwater world, with what looked like medieval technology. Open a channel to the aliens, I want to speak to their leader, Torek ordered. A nervous alien face soon appeared on the view screen, its beady black eyes blinking rapidly. At the intimidating size of the Volcar warship filling its screens, I am Captain Smith of the human vessel Enterprise, to whom am I speaking, it squeaked. I am Captain Torek of the Volcar Imperium, your kind has intruded into territory claimed by the Volcar, from now on you will provide 50% of all resources from your planet, to fuel the expansion of the Volcar fleets, resist and we will destroy your vessel and orbital infrastructure with our weapons. Captain Smith's eyes widened further, but he kept his composure. We mean you no harm, Captain Torek. Perhaps we could establish trade agreements that are mutually beneficial instead of threats. Torek laughed harshly. You are in no position to negotiate. I suggest you return to your planet at once and prepare the first shipment. We will be in contact once we retrieve the resources. The transmission abruptly cut off. Smith took a deep breath and signaled his first officer, Commander Jones, take us back to Earth and get me Admiral Singh on a secure channel, we have a situation. A few hours later Torex voice boomed across the Situation Room at United Nations Space Command, Admiral Singh's face remained stoic as the Volcar made their demands and threats, but inside her gut twisted, the Volcar were famous bullies of the frontier worlds and Earth was vastly unprepared for an advanced species. Captain Torek, while I understand the desire to expand your territories, Earth is just beginning to explore space and is in no position to provide such resources against our will, she replied calmly, perhaps we could establish diplomatic. Torek cut her off with a harsh laugh, do not try my patience, Admiral, I know your little planet possesses nothing of value but my people expect tribute, and we will have it one way or another, you have one solar day to begin transports to these coordinates, that is generous considering your primitive technology, I suggest you comply quickly for your own survival. The transmission ended. Singh turned to her aid. Dispatch the Luna defenses to Condition 1 and scramble X-Wing Squadron. And get me the President. It's time to initiate first contact protocol Bravo. She knew revealing their full hand could provoke a fight, but if Torek followed through on his threat, thousands would die needlessly. Humans didn't overstate their power, but it was time the Volcar learned they had severely underestimated it too. Admiral Singh called an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council to brief them on the situation. News of the Volcar's encounter and demands had sent the public into a panic. But she remained outwardly calm. Our X-Wing fleet is scrambling from hidden bases on Mars and the Moon. They will intercept the Volcar Armada within the hour. Observatories on the far side of our satellites are also powering additional defensive weapons unseen until now. The council members stared at her in stunned silence. Admiral, forgive me, but how is this possible? Earth's military capabilities were a fraction of what you're describing just days ago, replied the Chinese delegate. Singh nodded. 
For decades we have maintained strategic disadvantages as a deterrent. Revealing our full hand risks escalating conflicts before alternatives can be explored. But the Volcar left us no choice today but to even the odds. As she spoke, radar stations deep inside Cheyenne Mountain detected the incoming Volcar fleet breaking through Earth's atmosphere. Captain Torek couldn't believe his eyes. Where there had only been primitive satellites hours before, advanced laser cannons now swiveled into position, bristling with lethal energy. All ships brace for contact, evasive maneuvers. Now, he roared into his calm, but it was too late. Blinding emerald beams lanced out, shredding his escort ships within moments. Torn blared across the command deck as the remaining ships reeled under the onslaught. Deep below the Chinese countryside, concealed launch bunkers rumbled open like giant steel flowers blooming in the desert sand. Rocket flames ignited as squadrons of Earth's finest jetted into the fray, screaming skyward on pillars of fire and smoke. X-Wing 1, you are cleared for interception. Teach these Volcar bullies some manners. The pilot acknowledged control with a smirk. Though young, he was a veteran of the Luna Defense Academy, top of his class. His tight formation of advanced starfighters banked into a hard climb, accelerating past the sound barrier without so much as a tremor. On the Volcar flagship, Captain Torek surveyed the ruins of his once mighty armada. Only a handful of damaged capital ships remained under his command. He slammed his gnarled fist onto the command console in rage. This day was not going as planned. Commander, ready plasma bombs on all remaining ships. We will bombard that worthless planet into cosmic dust, even if it costs every last Volcar life, he screamed. But before the order could be carried out, a beeping caught his attention. Sir, we're detecting new contacts emerging from behind the fourth planet. Reading hundreds, make that thousands of small spacecraft on an intercept vector. Drac reported in disbelief. Torek watched in growing horror as X-wing squadrons filled his view screen by the hundreds. Their exotic alloys glittered like jewels under the system's yellow sun. But it was the squadron leaders who gave him greatest pause. Volcar ships, this is X-Wing leader. Power down your weapons and prepare to be boarded. Any hostile actions and you will be destroyed. The people of Earth wish no further bloodshed this day. For the first time in his long career, Captain Torek hesitated. These humans were full of more surprises than he could have imagined. His mighty ship was crippled, his escorts annihilated. Fighting now would mean doom for what remained of the Volcar forces under his command. With a heavy sigh he gave the order and their plasma cannons deactivated with a dull hum. Boarding pods streaked across and docked with a massive hull, disgorging armed human marines within minutes. Their businesslike efficiency left no doubt who was in control now. This is not over humans. You may have won the battle but the war has only just begun. Torek snarled as he was led away in restraints. The human commander gave him a thoughtful nod. There will be no war, Captain. Only peace, if your people are willing. Today you have learned that secrets can protect the innocent from tyranny. I hope in time the Volcar may come to see that strength comes not from subjugation, but partnership between all beings. The emergency meeting of the UN Security Council stretched late into the night. Admiral Singh laid out the full capabilities of Earth's defenses, as well as contingency plans for evacuating major cities, if the Volcar followed through on their threat of bombardment. The Council authorized her to take all necessary actions to deter further aggression. As she left the meeting, Singh called Captain Smith to give him new orders. Have the Enterprise deliver our message to the Volcar homeworld with all possible haste. Warn them we will hold their entire species accountable for any attacks on Earth. 
and alert our deep space sleeper ships, it may be time to accelerate certain projects. A few hours later, the small human ship dropped out of FTL near the crimson gas giant that was the Volcar home world. Volcar patrol ships immediately contacted them. Unidentified vessel, you are entering a quarantine system. Turn back at once or face destruction. Captain Smith calmly replied, This is Captain Jacob Smith of the Human Starship Enterprise, requesting immediate communications with your government. We bear an urgent message from Earth. The Volcar commander scoffed. Earth? Your primitive little world means nothing here. Leave or... He was cut off by the communication officer. Sir, I'm detecting anomalous energy readings near Enterprise. Sensors can't identify the source. On the Jupiter station, hidden for decades in the outer planets, scientists watched with pride as the first Orion-class heavy cruisers decloaked. While primitive on the outside, inside spanned decks larger than Earth's cities, armored with the latest stealth alloys. Dozens of snub fighters swarmed like angry hornets from their launch bays. The Volcar patrol ships opened fire at the Enterprise, but were vaporized by carefully calibrated bursts from the Orion weapons. Captain Smith, this is Admiral Carter in command of Jupiter Fleet. We will escort you to the Volcar home world. Please convey to the Volcar people that further hostile acts will result in their permanent expulsion from this sector of space. Within hours, the Orion fleet loomed like an angry storm cloud over the Volcar capital domes. Smith's message was blunt. The human species has evolved farther than you realize, technologically and philosophically. We seek only respectful cooperation between all people. However, your Captain Torek initiated open aggression without provocation or cause. Surrender him, and any ships or property taken from Earth, or face consequences your armadas will be powerless to withstand. The Volcar Supreme Commander was aghast. Only generations of Imperial expansion had kept more aggressive races from challenging Volcar rule. But these humans' fleets span the whole sector. How long had this buildup gone undetected? As he studied the images before him, he saw only the fires of war, reflecting in his terrified eyes if he did not act to appease the humans, yet keep honor. A shuttle soon left Jupiter Station carrying Captain Torek in restraints. As it docked with the Enterprise, three human marines escorted him before Captain Smith once more. You have the thanks of my people, Captain. Smith said calmly. I hope in time the Volcar and humanity can establish understanding. But for now, know that further aggression will be met with defense of our homes and families, by any means necessary. Torek shot him a venomous glare but said nothing, stalking back to the shuttle with the Marines. His vessel departed quickly, followed by the fighter escorts back toward Volcar home world. As Smith watched them go, Commander Jones approached. Orders, sir? Smith smiled softly. Send a subspace transmission to Admiral Singh. Inform her, Project Genesis is a success. And it's time to begin welcoming new allies to the Federation. <laughs>